Okay, so the last time um, we got together, we talked a little bit about the Flux architecture. And I promised that we would focus on each specific piece of the Flux architecture. So today we're going to talk about the view layer, which is what React is, um, and go into detail on how to use React to build a component. So in our application, we have this uh, messages component, uh, or we will have this messages component rather, because what we'd like to do is be able to display messages to an end user if there are problems in our application. So currently the app looks something like this. It's still not perfect and beautiful, but we're working on it. Okay, what we want to do is in the event that I come in here, I uh, broke it. In the event that I attempt to log in, then um, I want it to display an error message. So we'll get this back into a function and stay here in just a second. But let's walk through the messages component. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in the different pieces that we're gonna to need to build this component. So we have the use strict, which is just for the JS lint processor. Um, we're gonna import React. We're gonna import messages from the messages store. So I've already put together a basic messages store I'm going to import this message uh, component that is right next to me here in this common directory. Um, I'm going to ignore this one right now. And then I'm going to import these different components from Material UI so that uh, we can reuse Material UI's components so we don't have to do a whole bunch of um, implementation of those specific pieces on our own, which is also quite nice. Okay, now I'm going to add a function called get state. And this is going to live outside of the React component. Its responsibility is going to be to go to the store and figure out what pieces of information this component is going to care about. Okay, so it's going to return just a plain old JSON or plain old JavaScript object. Uh, and we're going to be interested in messages. So if I go to the messages store, and I realize we haven't actually looked at the store yet, but I, you'll just have to trust me for now that I've implemented this current method. And what it does is just return a collection of the current messages in the system. So the store is responsible for figuring out the state of messages. The component does not actually have to worry about any of that. So the get state method here is still just recovering the state from the store. The component itself is not actually generating any kind of state, it's just interpreting it from somewhere else. All right, so now we can start building our React component. Do export, export default react.create class. And the first thing we're gonna do is have our get initial state method. Now this method is uh, a lifecycle method, meaning this is something that React is going to call for us. So when we implement this method, um, it's going to fire when the component is initialized on, on the page, before it's ever rendered into the page, um, but during kind of that in initialization state, right? So before we actually do any rendering or any logic, we can get the, the state of the object. Now, not all your components are going to have an initial state. Some of your components will be completely stateless. But in this case, we are recovering state. We're recovering some data from the messages store using this get state method that we wrote up here on line eight. So I'm gonna just return get state. So that's all it's gonna do is gonna call that method. Now um, we're gonna add another method called component did mount. This is also a React lifecycle method, and it means that the component it has been initialized and is rendered into the page. So inside of here then, I can add kind of an initialization method, which is um, I'm gonna listen to my store. So the store um, extends, or rather uses event emitter from Node.js, which is just a, it's an event library. It just lets the store raise events. Um, and in this case, we can listen to those events. So we're going to have messages.add change listener. Uh, 
And so that's going to monitor the store. And anytime that the store emits an event that says, hey, I changed, it's going to call whatever callback I put in here. So we're going to call the callback uh, store changed. Now I have to go implement that method. So whenever the store changes, what we want to do is update our state. So this dot set state. Okay. Set state is a method provided by React. Whenever I call set state, it will update the internal state of the component, meaning this dot state dot messages in our case is going to change. Okay. That messages is coming from up here. Now, if I had other stuff, for example, uh, maybe I had a, uh, let's not call it current, that'd be confusing. Latest. Maybe I have a messages.latest or something that I'm interested in. Then that would also mean that this.state.latest had also updated. Okay, so I'm going to set the state by calling the get state method. I have to call the method. There we go. So now the component, anytime the store changes, the component will say, will will monitor that change and it will then update its own state based on the data coming out of the store. Again, the component isn't the one generating the state. The store is. The store is responsible for the data. The component is just responding to changes in the data. All right. Got to avoid memory leaks. Component will unmount. So this means that the component is going away. It's being removed from the page. And that, in that case, we want to remove change listener. So now this tells the store, we're done listening to you. We, we aren't going to respond to your events anymore. If you don't do that, then this this method will continue to call store changed over and over again. Um, even though your component has gone away, the reference to these methods has not gone away. So it's important to do this or you'll get memory leaks in your page, which can cause performance problems. All right. Now that we've done all that, we can implement our render method. So inside of our render, um, this is, of course, the output for the React component. So let's take our messages and let's turn them into uh, something that's uh, visible. So I'm going to loop over all of these messages that are part of our internal state. Maybe. There we go. And I'm going to turn them into something that can be displayed on the page. So the map function right here just iterates over a collection, which in this case is the messages from the from the state which came from the store. It lets us do something to each individual message, lets us transform it into something else. And then that's going to put the resulting collection into this variable right here. And we're using the ES6 let instead of the var just for scoping, so we're, we're keeping the scope within this within the render method. Okay. So we're going to return just a list item, and we will just output the. Oops, I'm just going to output the message. Like this. So that will give us a um, collection of messages. All right. So then down here, we're going to return the resulting um, component HTML. Although the, the tags, the syntax will right here is actually going to be turned into JavaScript objects and then put into the virtual DOM. But at the end of the day, it's going to get rendered out as a string into the uh, HTML page, which will be visible to us. OK. All right, so here's something to know about React. You can't use class. You always have to use class name. Class is a reserved word. <laughs> and so if you attempt to use class, it will use that as an attribute on the 
JavaScript objects and everything will fall apart. You're going to get all kinds of bizarre errors. So use class name. It's one of the quirks of using React, I suppose, but um, it's also a side effect of the guys who designed HTML using the word class when they probably should not have. Uh, anyway. All right, so we're going to give this uh, some class name because this is going to be where our, our messages are output. All right, so then I can just create an unordered list and we're going to dump our messages into there. So this is actually an array, but that's okay. Um, the JSX preprocessor will know what to do with that so that these are rendered out as objects, not just, um, I don't have to call it messages.join or something like that, which is also kind of handy. Okay, so now that we've got this piece implemented, um, for now I'm going to come out, come in out message up here because we're not currently using it. We'll refactor and, and use it here in just a moment. But uh, let's try and see if this is still busted now that I've taken this much of it apart. Anyways. Okay, um, it's because we're putting garbage methods in there, so let's get rid of that. And there we go. Now we have our login form back. And now if I attempt to log in, notice that I get this error message up at the top of my page. So that's cool. Um, but it never goes away, which becomes a little bit problematic. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let's refactor and let's use a message component. So what we're going to do then is come over into the message JSX. We can add the typical boilerplate stuff. I'm just going to copy and paste. So again, this is just going to render a list item. This.props.children is going to get the default. Um, well, let me just show you. So if I come back over here and we refactor, and instead of using an li right here, we make this a message. Now normally, when I pass properties to a React component, I'll do it something like this. So I could say message equals message. But sometimes you're only going to pass one value. And I actually like the syntax to look a lot like HTML. And that's what this does, is it says the message is going to get embedded as the sub-item, as, sub, as the child of this of this tag, as it were. So in order to do that, you can call this.props.children, and it will pull in this value right here. Had I done it this way, then inside of my component, I would do this.props.message. It would just match the attribute, the property name, from, from the definition where this component was set up. Okay, so let's change it back to children. Let's change this one back to um, just using, using it like this. Okay, so now let's go out and have a look. Let's refresh this page. And I hit login, and there's the missing credentials. Now, what I really would like to do is to make this go away somehow. So this is going to be really ugly, but we're going to do it anyway. So I'm going to import some of this. Let's see. I actually only care about maybe the flat button. Let's see. And the, um, the material UI components use different, I can't remember what it's called. They don't use on click, they use on something else. Um, it's on touch. Let's see. Let me just find this really quickly. So let's go look in the material UI code. On touch tab. On touch tab. All right, thanks. Um, 
And if you ever want to see what's going on inside these components, you can go pull down the material UI code. It's pretty easy to read. Okay, so on touch tap is going to equal some method. Um, so let's make that uh, remove. And then we'll come up here and we'll define a remove method. Okay, so there's that delete. If I click it and I show you the console, you can see there's that remove message that's output right there. Okay. That doesn't actually help us. That doesn't do us any good. So the next thing that we're going to do really quickly here is we're going to use the, um, we're actually not going to use the store. We're going to generate an action. So I have not yet defined any actions. Um, we'll go over that tomorrow. And this might actually be a good stopping place because what we want to be able to do is call an action to delete the message. Now, at first you might say, well, I could just hide this thing, right? Like I could, I could do something where I remove this LI from the DOM or whatever. But that's allowing this component to actually manage its state. Because just removing this LI from the DOM does not remove the message from the message store. And that's why we'll use actions to generate, or we'll use an action creator to generate an action It'll hit the dispatcher that will then hit the message store and say, remove this message, um, which will then propagate back down into the rendering of the components and will watch as the message disappears. So we'll, we'll do that tomorrow.